So hello, good afternoon. Congress participants, my name is Viviana Armela, Gutierrez de Armela, <laughs> from Mexico. And I'm very pleased to welcome you to this panel, which is a round table to discuss family enrichment around the world. And it, it will be very interesting to hear per perspectives from different continents about how family enrichment courses are impacting families and young professionals around the world. And it gives me very great, a great pleasure to introduce our panelists today. So we will start with Maria here from China, representing Asia. And she is Maria Li, Miss Maria Li, Mrs. Maria Li. So Maria is the president of family enrichment in China, Hong Kong. She is a global process owner for SAP for her company system, originally from mainline China. She received an MBA degree from the China Main, uh, Europe International Business School in 2001 and has completed the postgraduate degree in marriage and family education from the International University of Catalonia. Since Maria and her husband George got in touch with IFFD in 2005, she has participated, moderated, and promoted various courses in Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Maria and George have been married for 21 years, and they are now living in Hong Kong with their two sons aged 20 and 17. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And now from Ivory Coast, we have representing Africa, Mr. Olivier Yao. So Olivier is a coordinator, coordinator of family-oriented activities for the National IFFD Center of Ivory Coast. And he is a member of IFFD's French Technical Committee. And he is jointly working with the International University of Catalonia on the French version of its postgraduate degree in marriage and family education. He himself has a postgraduate degree in marriage and family education from WIC, in addition to his industrial engineering degree in Côte d'Ivoire. He also received a program management development degree from MDE Business School Abidjan. He is an affiliate of Ivory Coast from, from a famous business school in Barcelona, Yese. He is in charge of cocoa beans, cocoa beans supply worldwide chocolate manufacturer. He has been married for almost 20 years to Arlette and they have nine beautiful children. And now, from the Netherlands, representing Europe, we have Mr. Will van Erp. Will is a chairman of family enrichment in the Netherlands, and he has been happily married to Lisbeth for 30 years and is the father of two children. Together with his wife, he has been dedicated to promoting family enrichment in the Netherlands for the past five years and is, of course, a is a course moderator too. Will is a doctor of management accounting and works as principal lecturer and researcher at Utrecht University of Applied Sciences. Thank you. And from the United States, representing North America, we have Mrs. Louise Montes. Luis is a member of family enrichment in New York City, married to Oscar for 16 years and a full-time mom to five children, ranging in age four to 14 years. She received her bachelor in science degree from Cornell University and a master of science degree in conservation biology from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Louise has participated in many family enrichment courses, serves on the board of directors of family enrichment in New York, 
participates in IFFD's English Technical Committee and recently started moderating. She also volunteers at her children's school and at Environmental Education Center. That's Luis. And last but not least, from Chile, representing South America, we have Miss Florencia Donoso. So Florencia is a personal project leader and promoter <coughs> in Chile. She is currently in her third year studying journalism at the University of the Andes. She was chosen to help a professor with a study about corruption in Chile. She is the fourth of nine siblings and she is responsible for personal project in Chile. Despite her young age of 21 years, we are delighted to have her with us today. So I welcome all the panelists and I'm anxious to ask you some questions. So we'll start with you, Luis. So what, what are the challenges, Louise, that many families face in the American culture? Yes, yeah, so in the United States, uh, especially around metropolitan areas like New York City, where I'm from, families are extremely busy. I'd say our pace of life has gone from busy to almost frenetic. We spend a lot of time in our jobs and also a lot of time, what's left over, of running around with our children from activity to activity, from sporting event to sporting event. And we often don't take a time to stop and step back and spe especially spend time with our spouse together alone working on our marriage. About seven years ago, my husband and I took our first family enrichment course and back then I had many wrong ideas about marriage and children. At that time I had young children um, and I thought because they were young and they really needed me that they should come first, that their needs should be my top priority. After taking the married love course for the first time, I learned about the proper order of loves and I realized that I was placing my children's needs above my husband's when it really should have been the other way around. And if we had continued our marriage on that course, not placing each other first and placing our children's needs above our spouse, um, it's possible to see that over the years, our marriage really could have unraveled. And this was a life-changing moment for us and the start of a big change in our marriage uh, because building a strong marriage is an ongoing process. It takes a lot of time, commitment, and attention. And when we continue, we still continue to take family enrichment courses. It's a big part of our life. And when we go together to the general sessions, we know that we always have a date night on the calendar. And it's one way that we can prioritize our marriage. And we see when couples around us who don't prioritize their marriage, this can cause great harm. And we see more and more couples get into trouble and have their, their marriages fall apart. Thank you, thank you, Luis. So Maria, Luis has just um, mentioned the impact of uh, busy schedules focused primarily, primarily on careers and children and the, the, how it's affecting couples. How do you, how is, are there similar, similar trends in Asia? How do you see it in Asia? Yes, yes, in Asia it's a similar situation. Young people always has a very long working hours. Um, UBS, a uh, bank group of Switzerland, did a survey on the working hours for 71 cities. Guess what? Four of five top five cities among those uh, 71 located in Asia. Yeah, and Hong Kong employees work as the longest hours per week wow. among them. Yeah, it's around uh, 50. 50.1 hours per week, which even 14% higher than the number two city, Mumbai. Wow. Yeah, you can imagine the people work so hard, the work squeeze their leisure time, they have no much time spent with their family, enjoying their quality time together. So quite often, they um, delegate their parenting responsibilities to the helper, or to their grandparents. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
they, some of their parents, they don't understand their kids well, maybe much less than the helper, their grandparents, or even their teachers. That's why they don't know how to sort out their problems right. when facing their, the, the um, problem with the kids. Yeah. And another trend in Asia is, um, you know, uh, it's incredible competition send the goods to good school. So they put a lot of pressure to the kids. They send them to various of um, training centers. Like, uh, yeah, they, they uh, put much more attention to, uh, to educate the, um, the, the kids' um, skills, acquisite them uh, for the academic excellence, rather than educate them the, the vi uh, virtues and the values. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so you, you can imagine they are very limited leisure time just to spend to send the kids to the training school. It's really very pity, right? And last but not the least, you know, um, in mainland China, the, the person born in, uh, during the single child policy decades now grow up, they become wife and uh, husband mm -hmm. and also parents, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, um, some of them really much spoiled and be treated as the prince or princess in their original family. Mm -hmm. But now they grow up, they have to, uh, learn, uh, they have, uh, they set up their family, they have to take care of each other and also their, their children. But some of them may not be so capable to live independently. So they have to rely on their parents or parents-in-law much better, um, yeah, much. And then some of them even has to live together with uh, their parents and parents-in-law. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, um, such a question uh, brings to discussion quite often. Who would you like to see first if both your wife and your mom are joining in the water? And what, what would the question, what would the answer be of this man? You ask me? Yeah. Oh, luckily, uh, I know how to swim, so I will <laughs> support my, I will have my husband to save my mother-in-law. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good one. Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, so, and also, you know, in traditional Chinese value, the filial love and the respect are very high valued virtues. Yes. So you can imagine, if the two generation living together, wow. what a complex situation for the young couple's family, yeah. So it's uh, quite often give a lot of tension to the family and also, yeah, give a lot of problem even to the point of divorce. Wow. Yeah. I can imagine, yes. Thank you. So Florencia, Maria said that young people in China are always working very lot for long hours and like leaving a very little space for uh, for leisure time. Leisure time. So tell us what what uh, what sort of challenges are are young people experiencing in, in in Chile? In Chile, we face many similar problems. We are very busy, but I probably less intense than China. In recent years, Latin America has had a high number of marriages that end in divorce or separation. This has led the children of these broken marriages to lose hope that they can be happy with one person for the rest of their lives. What's more, they believe that it's normal for parents to divorce. When I was in first year of university, I invited some friends to my house and they asked me, to your mom's house or your dad's house? I was very surprised and replied that I only had one house because my parents are still together. This surprised them even more. This shows that the norm for many of my generation is that marriage is not forever. Because of this, the concept of family has been distorted. And the lack of belief in commitment adds to the fear of commitment. Today, everything is disposable. If your cell phone is broken, you just buy a new one. We want everything and we want it now. And with cell phones, we can achieve anything we want quickly, easily, and effortlessly. This is affecting relationship between young people uh, for example, if my relationship with my boyfriend is too difficult, I simply end it. If my long friend is no longer useful to me, I reject him. 
we don't put any effort in relationship now. Another important point to mention is the impact of social media. First of all, uh, this affects us in two different way, ways. First of all, in our mobile, we receive a large quantity of overly sexualized content that is then normalized. This is directly affecting relationship because the content is unrealistic for young men and women and can become destructive and addictive. Secondly, we may be unaware about the, the subliminal messages that bombard us constantly through our mobile. In this way, uh, gender ideology has permeated youth, completely distorting the idea of love and family. Uh, like three weeks ago, I was talking to a teacher assistant about a test I was going to miss while I was here. And he asked me what I was going to do, I explained, and then he, he asked me, is this Congress about the new families, like uh, families with same-sex marriages? And I was, no, this is about the traditional family with a mother, a father, and children. This quest his question, <laughs> his question clearly demonstrated that now come on, the, the world has changed. When you talk about families, not everyone is thinking about wife, husband, and children. They are thinking like all kinds of new families. And I'm going to finish now, don't worry. <laughs> uh, another way that uh, social media impact affects youth is that we are so exposed that we start living for that exposure. We start living out outwardly for appearances sake, not inwardly. Therefore, we lose, we lose our inner self. We stop thinking, and this is catastrophic. Young people are very intelligent and know a lot of things, but they are not reflective. Thank you, Florencia. So, Olivier, Florencia mentioned social media. And you, we know technology are, and social media are dramatically and continuously changing our, our world, and it's, they're here to stay. As someone said yesterday, they bre they're bread and butter. No, they're here to stay. So, our families are being definitely being challenged by, by this fact. How are families in, in Ivory Coast coping with this issue? Okay, thank you, Vivi, for this uh, this question. Uh, what is happening is that uh, all of us are being impacted by uh, globalization, and it's the same thing in um, Africa. And uh, we have uh, Africa families who are being transformed as well, and uh, the effects are almost the same. Sometimes with higher intensity, sometimes with uh, lower intensity, and if you want to take for example, uh, uh, typical cases, uh, much more people, parents, are working outside the home. Mm -hmm. So you can see that it can create other situations. And uh, as Florencia just mentioned, we are being pushed, hardly pushed, to modify the true definition of the family and you can feel it. You can really feel it. And uh, as a consequence as well, we have many other situations uh, developing that I can elaborate more later on. And uh, we have the increase of cost of living because many situations are triggering the increase of cost of living. And this creates uh, much, much families vulnerable especially in the rural areas, and uh, we are having more and more families not getting enough income for, for, for the education. And new technologies are not even impacting. I will not say impacting, I will say transforming. They are transforming the children, they are transforming the, the families. And if you want to narrow down a bit, in the case of, um, in the case of Cote d'Ivoire, Family enrichment is much more active in uh, Abidjan. Abidjan is the, the economic capital of the country with around 7 million people, which is 30% of the whole uh, country population. And in such a big city, what happens obviously is that parents 
are not uh, living far from the workplace. And uh, what happened? They commute. So they go to work, they come back, they go to work, they come back. And uh, believe me, the time they are spending the traffic is sometimes uh, discouraging. They will be spending two hours in the morning to go to work, two hours to go back home. So four hours in the day gone. If you want to make a quick calculation, uh, they will be taking it from the sleep because uh, at the end of the day, uh, they have to see their parents. But this one triggers absence. The parents are not at home. They don't see the kids enough. If you don't see the kids enough, what will happen? You will never know what are their friends, what are their feelings, what do they need, and so on and so forth. And so forth. And in this context, what is happening? It's a vacuum. So, you know, nature doesn't allow vacuum to stay long. So what fits in is the new technologies. So the new technologies are now becoming the new educators to replace the, children, to replace the parents in this uh, current environment. And we all know that kids are badly impacted by what they are watching. And uh, all of us, we know nowadays what is coming through the media into the heads of our kids. The knowledge they are, they are grasping and is not in favor of the vision that we want for the, for the families, for the kids. Uh, should we be desperate? I can see your face. I say no. If we are all here, it's because we are not desperate, because we have a, we have a, we have a solution. And just to quote a good friend of mine, uh, the world in which we are living might have lost something. So it's up to us sitting here to bring back our world by turning it upside down. Not in numbers, but family by family. And uh, is it possible to do that? I believe so because we have a strong tool and this tool is the yes <laughs> so let's 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 do it together so that it will be sound it will sound resound more what is this tool good and uh, with family enrichment it's it's a powerful tool to help each family, regardless the, the religion, regardless all the anything that we can think about, because family transcends differences. All families are families. Families are in, with low income, families with uh, high income, family with uh, anything. It's before a family, and family enrichment will be a powerful tool to help us. Thank you. Thank you, Olivier. <clears throat> now, Will, tell us what you see in, it's happening in, in Europe in this issue of technology. In, in uh, Western Europe and also in the Netherlands, what you see nowadays is that uh, family life is no longer what it used to be the, the cornerstone of society. Family life is no longer a, a self-evident cradle of uh, upbringing your children in, a, in, a, in the most prosperous way you can. Um, family life, so to say, has to compete with other lifestyle values. And what you see nowadays is that a lot of people think of professional or academic success first and being a family man second, so to say. And of course, this is uh, quite an individual choice, um, more or less a selfish choice, and, and families suffer from this. Uh, a second development I see, and this echoes the, 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 your comments, Florian, this, uh, like, like in Chile, Chile in, 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 the, in the Netherlands nowadays, almost half of all marriages don't last. They end in a divorce. And of course, the, this, this is very uh, uh, difficult for the spouses involved, but also um, uh, the children suffer, of course. Uh, many healthcare professionals in the Netherlands nowadays say um, children know, uh, doesn't know, uh, doesn't, doesn't matter how old they are, 
even uh, the older children, they suffer psychologically, they, they uh, underperform at school, they have attachment problems, they, they suffer, really, they suffer from the divorce of their parents. And um, a third development I see nowadays is, is the incredible pace of life. Uh, people are very, very busy. If you look at their professional agendas, they are really packed, completely full. But you could say, okay, this is five days a week, but also in the weekends, there are a lot of, and I, I, I use this term uh, on purpose, there are many obligations, so to say. Uh, family life becomes, becomes a kind of burden instead of a, a source of pleasure. It's a family burden instead of family uh, life as a, as a pleasure, as a, as, a, as a nice thing to have, as a thing to cherish, as a thing to um, ease your mind, uh, have joy together, etc., etc. And some uh, yeah, obvious things like having a dinner together is difficult nowadays, even in the weekends. So, um, yeah, and, and, and also spouses, they don't take the quality time they need to foster, of course, their mar marital bond. So these are difficult developments, yeah, difficult developments. I think it is clear that all of us see the lack of prioritizing family is the core of many problems in our countries. How do you think, Will, that family enrichment helps to address these challenges? First of all, Family enrichment is very clear on its priorities. Yeah. Spouses first, eh, the, the, mar uh, the marital bond first, and then the children and this package, this family package before your professional life, balance it with your professional life, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. It's very important for spouses to invest in the marital bond and to set the example. Children are copycats. They, they look at you for the example. They don't know how they see around, they copy, and you should be sure that they copy you. And in order to make sure they copy the right example, invest in this, this relation, invest in your marital bond as the basis of your family life, of course. This is very important. Um, this, this morning we had a beautiful talk of um, Professor Burns and he showed us a, a, a social business case, a social business case. And I think you could uh, see um, uh, family enrichment also as a social return on investment, mm -hmm. a social return on investment, because for me it's very important to know that at home everything goes well, that I... Um, uh, I'm, uh, that I have a good relation with my, my spouse, that family life is really in order, so that makes me at ease at my work as well, of course. So I think it's, it's influential, it's, it's a circle. If you get the things right, in the, the priorities right, you will benefit from it, yes. I'm sure. I think you have said something very essential, essential and very simple at the same time, but many of us have sometimes forget it, well, a lot of us forget it. And every, everyone is looking for peace and for peace of mind, but sometimes we look for it at the wrong places, right? <laughs> so, Maria, how about the effect of uh, family enrichment in Asia? What do you think? Yes, uh, family enrichment helps us a lot. Uh, very luckily, um, in Hong Kong, family enrichment receive a lot of support from different schools. Uh, uh, we have a uh, Tashan secondary school, Tashan primary school and the kindergarten and the small world kindergarten. They incorporate IFD parenting courses into their parenting education programs. Yeah, so the parents are highly encouraged to participate in the IFD case study courses. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a very good um, support to promote IFFD case study. In the other uh, hand, uh, it's also a very good opportunity for us to identify good um, potential moderators for our courses. Yeah, so um, some of the parents, they really love IFFD methodology. Yeah, they uh, gain this insight from so many courses they attended. Then um, they get trained as a great moderator. Yeah. Then they like to share their experience with other parents. 
Yeah, they also very good hands to uh, supported uh, like the personal projects uh, we had in China and in Shenzhen, yeah, in Hong Kong, yeah. And also um, in Shenzhen, men in China, uh, we support the uh, uh, girls' club by offering the parent courses to the parents. At the time, the girls they uh, doing fun activities, yeah. So. Um, the parents, they um, receive the useful courses. They also uh, invite their friends to attend these courses. Yeah, so um, the more they join our courses, the more, the better they understand what is uh, um, the true value of the marriage and the family. Yeah, so each of the couples can learn a lot, yeah. And uh, um, also, you know, the parents are encouraged to um, pay much uh, more focus and the priority on the family time, yeah, and uh, focus on the raising their children to be strong in virtue and the character, yeah, not just academically, you know, it's a typical issue <laughs> situation, yeah. And our courses also emphasize uh, how parents are primary um, educator of their children, and they are encouraged to learn how to set a proper love, order, and a priority in the family, yeah. So, uh, you know, this topic always bring hot discussion in Shenzhen whenever we discuss it. <laughs> so, yes, it's true. So, you know, um, the more united, uh, they, they, they know that, they, they start to know that they, the more united the couple is, the, um, the, the um, happier marriage will be, and uh, the more capable they will be support all the family members, yeah. So of course, um, the grandparents must be respected, but they cannot intervene the young couple's love, mm -hmm. yeah, and not be um, uh, replace the parents' uh, responsibility to educate their children, exactly. yeah. So the, of course, the parents has to communicate very well in their, uh, in, in order to reach a common vision for their family. Exactly. Yeah. I think we can't forget that the parents are the, the ones responsible for their kids' education, the stability of the family. The yes. grandparents are a great support. Now, in these days, I, I think more, no? They have an, a more active role, the grandparents, but their parents are the only responsible, the ones, no, the primary responsible. So, Olivier, <coughs> How do you think family enrichment helps address the challenges that African families have face right now? Okay. So the, the, the power, I will not say the power, I will rather say the, the miracle, because family enrichment uh, plays miracle, not just changes. So the, the, the miracle that family enrichment is triggering in, uh, in Africa in, uh, uh, as well in, in Cote d'Ivoire is the fact that parents are, are becoming more aware of the impact of their absence. You know, we only, I will not say the, the ladies because the, the men, we, we only have a reason to justify everything. Uh, please, ladies, don't copy that. <laughs> <laughs> so we can be outside the house for any good or bad reason, but the consequences are there so if you are absent if you are absent things will uh, will be happening and you know with the case methodology we are helping the the parents to to think we help them to provide solutions not solutions that you need to go and understand uh, deepen uh, analyze before implementing no solutions that once you leave the course you can immediately put it into practice so with that methodology we have seen some parents who have been uh, completely changing the the scale of values as uh, louise and uh, will just mentioned for some of them they have re prioritize what is essential into their life. They have changed their, their habits 
and they have adopted new behaviors. And with this change, you can see that the impact starts to, to happen. Some of them, they were truly believing that uh, having lunch or dinner with the family was a waste of time because they can do many things. But the, the, the Thomas just highlights the impact of what can happen around the dining table. What they were doing as well is cutting off the mobile time. Mm. For some of them, they were sort of, uh, when they're, while they are ringing at the door, the, 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 cell is, the cell is on the ears, they are on communication. The kids will open the, the door, they will say, Daddy, how are you? Uh, I'm on the phone, please. You continue. And, uh, so some of them started to discover that when I'm at home, I need to cut off my uh, screen times, mobile or TV, and to give time to, to the family. Some others, what they have invented and which is wonderful, is relax together with the family. Mm -hmm. So the programs of TV, the TV programs are watched together, we are enjoying together, and we are resting together. And there was this, uh, this dad, I'm sure that all the dads here are not like this one. Uh, I, I'm sure, I'm sure. So there was this dad that was a true believer that uh, the school, uh, the child education is uh, self-controlled by the school and the backup plan is the, the wife. So if the school fails, no man here is like that. I can confirm it. And uh, the backup plan is a wife. And uh, if anything, uh, if everything doesn't uh, go right, you'll go maybe uh, and complain just so. Unfortunately for him, the school of the, of the daughters has made mandatory taking a family enrichment course as part of the process. So he went and took the first step course. And uh, when he came back, he was anxious, sleepless, and uh, restless because he has now discovered some habits of the kids. They were not sharing anything to him, not talking to him, not doing anything with him. And uh, he was like shocked. So out of the toolbox that he took from the family enrichment, he made sure that all weekends were having, they were having lunch and dinner together. And he managed out of this effort to reconquer the, the kids to have at least one other day in the weekdays to when the kids were having half day school to have another lunch. And uh, he discovered that uh, the kids were uh, picky eaters with low appetite on top of that. So that they choose what they have to eat and they don't have appetite. And uh, you know, all of us during our childhood, we have one famous dish that uh, when our mother prepares it, we are so, so uh, exact, uh, ecstatic. And uh, this type of food, whenever the dad was eating it at home, uh, the kids were saying, were asking, Daddy, what are you eating? What is that? I don't like it. But the dad was a, a, a good commercial guy. He would be eating very much and with appetite. So out of this uh, 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 impression, the kids would say, okay, can, can I try? They will be trying. I say, oh, but it's sweet. I say, yes, this is for you. You can eat it. And uh, out of this involvement at home, the kids now become to share. Share time. Uh, share information, share uh, everything, and the habitat went from zero to hundred. <laughs> they were eating now everything. Everything was uh, was looking sweet and good because Daddy likes it. And uh, you can see that just because the person has managed to be at home with the kids, dining with them, family enrichment has worked a miracle in this family. And this is the type of things that we expect family meeting to do. That's 
That's great, Olivier, because we are IFFD courses are hands-on, huh? hands-on courses. So they're not theoretical, theoretical, but hands-on that that come to like uh, solutions for the next day to put to put on practice. No? Exactly. So, um, Louise, you mentioned that um, often couples don't make their spouse their priority, you know, like the, their number one. So, what does family enrichment help with this issue in the U.S.? Yes, well, in the United <coughs> States, um, especially around our big cities, you can find people from all over the world. And um, in addition to that, uh, children leave their homes uh, to go to university, and then they travel around the country in search of jobs, um, move around a lot. So um, what ends up happening is couples can end up marrying um, people from very different backgrounds and also living very far from their families. And uh, in this situation, without a lot of family support, being far from home, it's really uh, even more important that the couples take care of each other, that the spouses take care of each other and make each other their number one priority. Uh, we were taking family enrichment courses with a couple uh, that were from two different countries. The, the woman was very, very social and gregarious and open, and the husband was from a country where the men were very reserved and not quite so talkative, and they were having a real difficulty um, connecting and, and communicating in, in their marriage, and they weren't really making each other their, their, their top priority. But after taking family enrichment courses for several years, the mother of the wife said, you know, your, your family is a different family because through family enrichment, they were really able to communicate on a deeper level and to connect. And this was uh, extremely important for them. Um, I can also add that my husband and I are from two different countries. <laughs> we met in New York City, and um, when we have a misunderstanding, I often joke and say, in what language are we speaking? <laughs> because we do indeed speak two different languages, but family enrichment has also taught us to communicate better. And what we've learned in, in family enrichment is so strong and so powerful that it's able to bridge uh, cultural differences. That's nice. Thank you, Luis. So, Florencia, although you're not married, what, what can you observe from family enrichment that, that helps couple, you know, you know, the challenges they have? Well, I will speak uh, about my parents because I don't have the experience yet. But um, my parents are my role model. They have been married for 26 years and they love each other very much. And they have passed this love on to us, their children. We are nine. Um, but the greatest example that my parents have given me uh, is that they always make time for themselves and then for the children. With them, children never come first. So uh, I think that is something that maybe they, are le they learn in family enrichment courses. Um, I can see the way my mom loves my dad in all the little things she does for him. For example, she can go till the ends of the world looking for his favorite chili. And <laughs> with my siblings, we always laugh at mom because she, every time she buys something, she says, it's for dad, whether it's something my dad loves, toilet paper or the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's like making him, making him happy is in, in her DNA. <laughs> um, seven years ago, when my dad started working in family enrichment, he had to give a talk and he asked me to make him his PowerPoint presentation because he's old and he doesn't know how to use technologies. <laughs> so he gave me all his notes and he started reading. With, uh, I started to become fascinated with all that new world for me. And then I start to understand a lot of things like the way they raised me and educate me, the way they scold me. So every time my dad was, uh, was angry with me, I was like, ah, I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my dad are over there, and maybe they just found about this, so sorry, Dad. <laughs> 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 
That's great. I love that. I love to hear that the, that effect of IFFD in your in your life. <laughs> And what do you, how do you think IFFD courses can affect or help young people around the world? Well, um, first, it gives personal project. It gives young people the opportunity to stop and think. We live in a busy world and we often get caught up in our busy lives. So uh, we want to give them the opportunity to stop, look deep and decide what they want to do with their lives. In addition to this, it gives uh, boyfriends and girlfriends the opportunity to know each other, get to know each other better, analyze their courtship, deal with any issue, and decide if they are with the right person to marry. But the most important thing about personal project is that it gives us all hope. It helps us realize that we are not alone on thinking about these ideas of how to balance a good professional life with a happy personal life. And it also helps us to realize that um, although young people in general are quite lost, everyone is looking for something more. The vast majority is looking for meaning in their lives. Uh, the people that create personal project courses, uh, they saw this need in young professional and quickly created this great course with, life, uh, with real life case studies. Uh, and they have the flexibility to change the business model from couples to single professional. And this has been very effective in, in a lot of countries. And I, I, I can see that uh, young people are affected by their own experience, but often affected by the, their parent experience. So personal project gives them hope that being together with someone forever is possible. And also, it allows young people to create bonds with friends who, who think like them and who help them to be coherent. That is so great. Thank you, Florencia. And what do you see, what are the next steps for, uh, in Chile for personal project? Uh, in Chile, we start on March this year. And we, we return from this Congress. We want to expand to another city in Chile that is two hours away from Santiago, Viña del Mar. And we want to reach the, most, the more vulnerable areas from Santiago. But the most important thing is that we want to take advantage of the capacity that young people have to empower themselves with everything, emotionally and, I don't know, uh, but... <laughs> Uh, and take that capacity and empower them with the concept of family and love to make them to take the word out about what we are doing here, what is the real concept of family, that love exists, that happiness exists. So that is our, our goals for next year and we want to focus on expansion. Thank you, Florencia. I think we all here love to see your energy, <laughs> really. <laughs> It's very inspiring, so keep it up. And now, Will, I'm very curious to know how family enrichment has changed your life. Um, actually, um, we joined, my wife and I, we joined uh, family enrichment quite late, I suppose. I'm a <laughs> late adopter or despacito, despacito. I learned yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only after 20 years of marriage, we, we uh, learned family enrichment. The, 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 the oldest one was off to university. So at that time, I didn't really think I needed family enrichment. Uh, I, I was quite skeptical, to be honest. When, when Elisabeth, my wife, came with this, uh, she's sitting up front here, and she's uh, <laughs> listening critically, I suppose. But she came up with the idea to join family enrichment. and. Um, yeah, she's more sharp with it than I am because she, 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 saw, uh, she uh, saw the added value of this program much faster than I did. And she thought it could really enrich our marriage. So, of course, I want to make my wife happy. And I assume, I hope I'm not the only one here. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so, we, we went to this married love course and... Um, I, 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 my skepticism disappeared very quickly because, because it was a, 
the, 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 the cases, they were real life, so to say. You could very easy identify with the problems in those cases. And um, it, it was not a, a, a course that says it was interactive and not being interactive. This was really interactive. We had uh, nice discussions, not only with your spouse, but with all the other uh, uh, members, uh, uh, couples as well. And, and of course, as, as Olivier said, you, you learn deep things, but also very practical things. I remember learning um, something from uh, Gabriel Rigoire. Um, we all know what land is, I suppose. We all know what land is. But Viviane, do you know what a romantic land is? <laughs> do you know what a romantic land is? I would like you to explain it. Okay. I, I, and maybe your husband <laughs> is listening really as well. Want, but I think he's not here. That's <laughs> ah, that's, that's a pity. Because, but it's a pity. For, for all the elders. I hope this is re everyone, uh, someone is recording this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but a romantic land. I was taught and uh, practiced is, is, is this. For 40 days, every day you do something special for your spouse. A little gift, wow. a little attention, a little compliment or something like that. Just little, but especially 40 days on a row. 40 days on a row and things change. I'm sure things change. What, what I did realize in family enrichment was you can't never stop investing. Even after 25 years of marriage, you still have to invest in your ma marital relation. It's, 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 it's important to keep it up to date. It's important to, to check. It is important to have these discussions together to, to, to make sure you're on the same level. And especially, no matter how old your kids are, they come to you, for example, they come to you for advice. So be sure this marital bond is safe, this marital bond is strong. That wouldn't be much. Wow. Thank you. That's beautiful, Will. Thank you so much. Now, Louise, how has family enrichment improved your life? Yes, for sure. Uh, family enrichment has had a very big impact on our life and on our marriage, and improving our marriage bond. Um, but I'd also like to talk about friendship for a few moments here, uh, because friendship among couples, among individuals, greatly enhance our life. And it's also the basis for how we expand family enrichment. Um, we invite our friends to attend courses with us, and, and that's how we can reach more, more people. So it's very important to have friends and, um, and, but it's hard sometimes in our very busy, busy lives to take time out to form strong friendships, but we should. It's good for all of us to be together, and it's also good for our children to see that even though we're adults, friendship is important to us too. Uh, there was a couple very dear friends of ours who uh, helped to organize family enrichment courses, and when they were expecting their fourth child, the mom was going through um, a very tough time with the pregnancy. She was very sick, but the couples who had taken family enrichment courses with her uh, organized and cooked meals for the family for an entire month, and it was so beautiful to see this kind of spontaneous support, an example of true friendship in a time of need. Um, and at the heart of every family enrichment course is, uh, is friendship and the friendship that's formed in the small group meetings. The small group meetings are when four to six couples get together, usually on a monthly basis, and they discuss a case and a topic. And the friendships that are formed in these small groups can last a long time because we've talked about and shared something that's very close to our heart, which is our family. And uh, being together with our small groups uh, really helps us to be better spouses and, and parents. I agree with you, Luis. I think anyone who has taken the courses, the I-50 courses, has left with several or, or, or a lot of n n good friends, like profound, you know, friendships. And that is invaluable, no? It, it makes like a, a great support network, network, no? So, Olivier, with you. How has family enrichment improved your life? We did our, our first course in 2001, and it was first step, which is one year after we, we got married. And uh, 10 years later, uh, in 2010, we, we did it again. Not that we, we forgot, but uh, we discovered that there was some, something to be fixed into the process. 
it's like uh, you you want to travel to a long distance, so you plan your your job your your travel carefully. You make all the calculations. Uh, you design the boat and you set the direction. You say, "Let's go," and out of confidence, out of uh, assurance, you don't check anything. You just believe that whatever is going on will be leading you to the to your final destination. And when out of uh, uh, courage, you start to check the compass, you discover that you were drifting. You were going into a wrong direction. And this is what happened to us. And uh, we were so grateful to rediscover what we believe was correct, but we're not doing it correctly, uh, actually, when it comes to uh, uh, children's education. And we, 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 we learn a lot. We, we learn a lot, especially the, f the situation, the, the case method. Because if you don't have the facts right, forget about defining the good problem. And if you don't define the problem correctly, it means that any solution will never work. And this was a process that were became uh, became, uh, became our bread and butter on our on our daily uh, on our daily life and out of this good feeling out of this uh, uh, process uh, my wife and i uh, said okay if we have been able to receive so much why don't we help others say so let's go so we jump into the yard so we managed to take courses to become uh, moderators and uh, actually we didn't know in what we are getting ourselves into because if someone has told us we would have, we would have uh, thought uh, two times before engaging because at that time there were very few ants and uh, it was quite stressful because uh, moderating, uh, meeting families, uh, uh, meeting, uh, this, uh, recruiting other families, it was quite stressful. Hopefully, nowadays, we have more hands. And uh, what happened as well is that uh, with moderating, uh, we started to discover the, the value of listening. Because we, we have to listen to the adults during the, the, the general session. And uh, we have as well to help the people to think, think deep in order to get the solution to their own problem and uh, gradually arrive to a, a solution that will be fitting the, the, the situation. And uh, this process of listening, trying to assist, trying to help, trying to guide into the deep thinking has been uh, our takeaway because uh, now, uh, currently our kids are in the pre-adolescent and adolescent uh, situation and we are trying to apply them. And uh, we all know that this period of adolescence is the period of examination for the parents. So you have to, you have to succeed. I know. <laughs> Tell me, tell me about it. I have, I love that phrase because I have four of those adolescents at home in Mexico right now. So I, I understand that examination. Lucky, lucky you. Uh, so Maria, the, the same question to you. How has, how has family enrichment improved or changed your life? Oh, for me, it's a long story. So it's back to the Chinese New Year of 2005, when our first uh, chairman of um, family enrichment um, uh, organization of uh, China and Hong Kong, Mr. Jo Kim Chu, invited Raphael Pig come to Hong Kong to give a um, IFD um, case study moderator pilot training course, which lasted three full days. So my husband and I, uh, we were so lucky to join this course. So it's really uh, overwhelmed for us. It's just, uh, um, you know, so many emotional, uh, so many emotions um, to us immediately, like uh, shocks, excitement, and eager to begin. 
um, you know, uh, it's really the um, first time we saw such an awesome course. It's really touched the root course and to, uh, for all those um, problems, the family problems. I remember um, it was uh, uh, the first step, uh, the series of first step. At that moment, we still use 10 cases. Yeah. So, you know, each, uh, to the end of each of the discussion, it comes to the root cause will be the parents' problem, right? <laughs> so it's really a shock for us. So we think it's a really, really a good tool can help us and uh, others can really lift them, lift them, uh, lift us up from the root to help um, ourselves and uh, help our friends. And when uh, we go back home, I couldn't sleep. I was uh, whispered and I told my husband, we really need it. We should have this course begin in Shenzhen to help ourselves and our friends, you know. Really? And what yeah. did he tell you? Did he agree or did he tell you, just go to sleep, please? <laughs> oh, yes, he did agree, but he also said, Rome didn't build up in a day just to go to sleep. It takes time. Otherwise, you cannot get up tomorrow morning to bring the kids to park. <laughs> yeah. So since then, um, we start to attend the, almost all the um, FD courses held in Hong Kong. We would travel to Hong Kong from Shenzhen, where we live in mainland China. Yeah. And the course really helped us a lot. So um, my husband tried his best to, to uh, f find time to spend with, with us, and especially to do sports with our two boys, considering he uh, works as an auditor, which requires a lot of tra travel from him. And he also, you know, learned to have a regular or irregular date with me. So like this time, <laughs> before we come to London for the Congress, he told me, oh, let's have the honeymoon travel again. <laughs> so it's really, <laughs> thank you. And for me, I also learned a lot, you know, um, I start to learn how to say sorry and how to accept uh, uh, criticism from my husband and to my boys. It was very hard for me, as I mentioned before, uh, in traditional Chinese value, the filial love and the respect is very important. So I expect uh, respect, um, uh, I expected uh, filial love and the respect from my boys. Otherwise I feel it's a losing face, you know? <laughs> but finally I realized I also should know what they uh, dislike or what they like. So I start to learn how to accept their different opinion and I will not take it as a disrespect. Yeah. So even now, um, our two boys are transitioning from the teenagers to the adults. They like to share their subtle feelings and the emotions with us. We think it's really precious. It also helps us to learn, you know, uh, make the strong bond with the young generation. Then we could learn and understand how the young people think and uh, act and why. Yeah, so it's really a big help for us and also let us uh, uh, learn what is the normal family is, which is with the love of self-giving um, and the mutual respect. And we can really, um, with, um, with the help, we can grow up as a couple and together with our kids and the other family members. Wow. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing that, Maria. That was very pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, Florencia. How can all of us here who are married help to make a pers the personal project a success in, in all of our cities? I will tell a story to explain it. Uh, this semester course in was initially more difficult because uh, this semester, for all of us, because this semester in Chile is shorter and we are very busy, so a lot of people didn't want to commit to this course. 
So in August 6, we had 10 people register in the course and it, it was going to start two days later. So the person in charge of scheduling the moderators called us and tell, you, tell us uh, if, you don't, if you don't have 30 people, we, the course will, will not go. Obviously, we stressed out. Uh, we start begging our friends to sign up, or we force them, we don't know yet. <laughs> so um, uh, we start looking for people everywhere and anywhere. We, we were crazy. Uh, but in short, we managed to register 30 people in two days. <laughs> Well, how? With the help of Family uh, Enrichment Network. They start working with us and start helping us find young people. My dad invites some girls that work in, their, in, her, in his office. Everyone start working with us. So now in Santiago, Chile, we have a course of, project, of personal project with 30 people and we had to, to keep 10 people out because they were too late and registering. So, what conclusions can be drawn from this? Personal project is organized by young people, for young people, but, and I think I speak on behalf of all those who are organizing personal project in their respective countries, we need the help and motivation of you, the old people, <laughs> <laughs> to make this work. We, wow. we can't do it alone, we need your help. <laughs> we are silly young, we are silly young. <laughs> okay. It was a joke, you're not I old. Think, I think we, the old people, are very motivated to help in all we can. And we really love your, I mean, your, as, as we said before, your energy and your, you, we are very motivated by your experience and we, we, we all want to help, as, aren't we? Are we? Don't we want thank to help? Thank you, thank you. So now we'll, I would like to ask you about the, the expansion plans in, in your country. In, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, the expansion plans are closely related to personal project. We have quite an experience in, in the family enrichment courses like married love, first steps, first letters. But to, to succeed in, in recruiting new couples every year, it's very important, we real, realized, to reach out to those who are on the brink of getting married, who are on the brink of starting their family. So we, we, have, we had a personal project part one for two years now. And we, in, in, in the upcoming year, in the upcoming season, we make two changes. Uh, first of all, uh, so far the general sessions were only in one city, in, in, the, in Utrecht, in the middle of the Netherlands. And we're gonna offer more general sessions at different cities throughout the Netherlands. And uh, we like to partner up with the uh, family enrichment in the UK with Maria Kemp and her success story on personal, uh, personal project part two. We have uh, quite a large group of youngsters who took part in the, 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 the personal project part one. And they are yeah, still waiting for a follow up, so to say. And we, of course, we want to stay close to them. We want to stay in contact with them. And, Personal project part two would be an excellent uh, choice to to to, uh, to nourish this need. Perfect. And now, Maria, what are your um, what are what are the plans in, in China in your region for expansion? Uh, the good news is, um, you know, right after we uh, go back to home, uh, we will start the present project in Guangzhou. Our young friends, uh, young professionals in Guangzhou are waiting for us, eager to start to begin their present project. Wow. Yeah, it will be our new landmark in our region. Mm -hmm. That's Thank great. you. That's great, Maria. And um, how have we promoted a personal project in your country, knowing that these participants will be the next generation for IFFD? Yeah, so um, as uh, uh, Florenza mentioned just now, the young people um, 
they're facing the current uh, situation in the cost, um, you know, um, a lot of uh, bias um, value and the distorted rules. So actually, they're also very confusing, right? They need hands to help them to remove the clothes. So present project uh, just uh, comes to the right time. And we also have uh, many uh, good friends. They know the young professionals well. They also understand the present project values well. They help us to um, recommend uh, many uh, good recommend, yeah, the, the candidates, um, young people, and uh, even the coordinators for the present project. Of course, um, word of mouth is also uh, mm -hmm. attracting, help us attract many young people to join the present project. Yeah, so we have uh, started the um, personal project since uh, two years before in Shenzhen, and then we also run a uh, personal project in Hong Kong last year and this year. This year we even have uh, two sessions sem uh, parallelly running, one for English, one for Cantonese. Yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Now, Luis, I heard you have a funny story that you wanted to share with us. Yes, uh, this is a very funny story um, <laughs> that I heard about. There was a, a couple who was taking a family enrichment course. They had been invited by their neighbors to take this course, but the neighbors ended up not joining the course that time. So no one else knew this couple very well. And when they went to the general sessions, the husband would often show up with a broken nose, a black eye, and no one knew what to make of this situation. Was, so, it, was he a bitten husband? Maybe. Maybe he was. But finally, the team leader gathered the courage to ask uh, this man, you know, is everything okay? <laughs> What's going on? Um, is everything all right? And he said, you know, um, yes, I, I am a construction worker, but in addition to this, I am also a professional kickboxer. <laughs> <laughs> and my fights are scheduled the day before the general session. <laughs> and this is why I'm coming all bruised and battered and, and beaten. So you never know what's going to happen <laughs> in a family enrichment course. That's, that's funny. <laughs> everything can happen. Yes, everything can happen. <laughs> so, I think uh, we, we have to announce that our time is up. So, I thank you all for giving, uh, first of all, you, the panelists, for giving us a snapshot of how family enrichment has been a, b a big impact in our countries and all around the world. And thank you for your participation. I think we must be very aware of the huge treasure we possess here in IFFD, yeah. no? because we had had the experience of the huge happiness and peace of mind, as Will tell us, no? that these courses have brought to our families. No? We all must have the urge and passion to transmit and to share them with, all the, with the whole world. We want to transform the world by transforming families one by one, First, our family, but first of all, our marriage. I think we have all made that clear today, no? Starting by our marriages. That's the way we start, no? And it has been an honor, but I want to mention one person that has been key for our round table, that she's under, behind the scenes, and that, he, that she has been a, enormous help to us, that she is Gillian Roji. Did I say it well? Roji? Please stand up, Gillian. Stand up, stand up. Stand up, Gillian. She helped us a lot behind the scenes and with enormous work to, to make this possible. So, thank you, Gillian. So, Thank you all and enjoy the Congress as much as we have been doing till now. Thank you very much.
So thank you very much. Thank you very much, the whole panel, um, for sharing your testimony with us. It was, it was wonderful, and Vivian especially, Viviana, for, for drawing that out. I think we're all enriched by it. So thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I'd also like to um, ask everyone to express their appreciation for all of our speakers today. Uh, it's been an amazing day, and we still have one more to go. So please can I have a hand for all of our speakers today. So just one or two last announcements. Uh, first of all, as you leave the hall, if you've been using headsets, uh, please leave them here just outside the hall. Um, then tomorrow, we're starting a little bit earlier, 9.45, uh, and starting off with the session straight away. And last of all, um, tonight, uh, after our, our drinks reception and the festival, uh, the festival ends at 8.45, but we have to clear the building by nine o'clock. Uh, if we leave any later than that, then the IFFD receives charges. So uh, the, the trouble is I know how much everybody wants to talk together. Uh, but if you can leave by nine o'clock, then every, everyone will be happy. So next, all we have to do is enjoy our drinks reception. <laughs>